Thank you for staying with us. You're still on The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Right now, we'll be looking at what the headlines are saying on the national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the headlines is Mohamed Abdullahi. He's a public relations analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure. Yes. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, compliment of the seasons, Nigerians. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right, let's see what the National Dailies are saying this morning. And we'll be starting with the punch. Um, the major headline here says, APC defends federal government as labor wants against failed promises. So um, yesterday, the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, gave a New Year's Day speech to Nigerians talking about how he understands um, our sufferings and all of the decisions he has taken so far is, you know, for the growth of Nigeria and our economy. And so um, APC right now is defending, obviously, his speech. But we have some writers here, which is PDP tag speech as avest of deceit. NLC TUC says Nigerians are tired of failed promises. And APC lampoons PDP Labour Party urges Nigerians to disregard mischievous opposition. What are your thoughts on this? On the speech, the president's speech first, and the fact that... Um, PDP has come to say it is a harvest of deceit, and APC also now um, trying to just tell us that, fighting you know, back. fighting back, <laughs> basically, saying, no, it is not, it's just a mischievous opposition, and they're defending the precedent right now. Yes, um, like we always have, we always have every, you know, 1st of January speeches by our president, so it's not yeah. like a a new initiative or something that is a novel thing. I mean, we've always had this. Uh, but um, what is what what is important, uh, I think, is the fact that uh, most times these speeches are just based on promises, promises, and promises, and promises. But there are actually no clear-cut agenda or clear-cut pathway for those promises to be delivered. Yes. Uh, one of the major highlights in the, I mean, the president's speech yesterday was the fact, uh, you know, I think he talked about uh, electricity as a priority. Uh, right now, Nigeria as a country is actually running on less than perhaps 5,000 megawatts mm. of electricity for the whole country. I mean, for more than 220 million people, uh, for a country that is uh, more than 9,000 plus, I mean, in terms of square meters and so on, so which is quite appalling. So hopefully, before the end of uh, the president's four years, because I know perhaps maybe a year is not enough, perhaps before the, 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 the end of the tenure of the president, we should be doing more than 10,000 plus. Uh, I keep telling people, just a single mosque alone in Saudi Arabia, just a single mosque, I'm not even talking about the city, a single mosque has more than 10,000 megawatts. So why should Nigeria, for 63 years, still be running on less than 5,000 at best? It's, it's really disgraceful. I, I, another thing I could pick up from the president's speech is the, you know, the issue of minimum wage. I know even in December, majority of the salaries of, salaries of uh, public, uh, what is it called? I mean, civil servants, even the military were not paid, uh, prompting rumor that uh, the, the usual armed forces celebrations this month might be truncated by uh, I said rumor anyway, uh, by, 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 the, by some of the military personnel, which is shocking. So it, 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 it's encouraging that the president is talking about like a new minimum wage, I mean, in his speech yesterday, which like hopefully it will be implemented. It won't be just rhetorics. So yes, the PDP, like you mentioned, and even the LP and other opposition party have the right to uh, query the speech of uh, the president. They also have the right to target what they wish because, you know, it's uh, like I said earlier, this is speaking to Nigerians every first of the year. I mean, first of January is not a novel idea. It's something that we've had over the years, but it keeps being promises, promises and promises. And at the end of the year, uh, we have little to show for it when we go back uh, to, 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 you know, to, to juxtapose the speeches with realities on ground. Yeah. 
I don't know if it's really something to be happy about when we know that, like you said, some salary, people were not paid their salaries, federal workers at least were not paid their salaries, um, at least we know of lecturers that came on the show and told us that they were not paid salaries for December. And then some states have not been able to implement the 30,000 Naira minimum wage, and we're still talking about, about a, a living wage improvement when we do not even have the ones that we are having now, that we're supposed to have now being paid. So I don't know where that money will come from. I don't know how Nigerians are going to raise that money and then how it will translate to having a better life. For, what about the people who do not work? What about the people who may not be working with the federal civil service? Yeah. Because it may not cover for states and local government employees. Yes, you're absolutely right, uh, and that it behoves on the, I mean, and on 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 the various state governments to look at ways of improving their IGR, you know, uh, internally generated revenues, and some other ways to to raise funds, uh, uh, perhaps cut costs of governance and so on and so forth, and so many of the frivolities that we spend money on, in order to meet these uh, very important uh, uh, obligations. Because, uh, you know, uh, whatsoever, even the infrastructure that we talk about, as, as well as other things that are very germane at the moment, uh, you agree with me that uh, the welfare of uh, the masses is, uh, is paramount, is, uh, should be topmost, uh, uh, I mean, on, on, on the agenda of the government and even the private sector. Mind you, uh, I, I, I don't have the statistics off, offhand, uh, but I know perhaps... If you put together the federal civil service and, and, and the state civil service, perhaps it's, I don't think it's up to 5% or even 10% maximum of, uh, of uh, Nigerians' uh, population. So um, what we are talking about is actually still very minimal compared to larger population. So like you rightly said, what about those people who don't work for government, people perhaps at worst who don't even have anything to do, who don't have jobs and so on and so forth. How is, you know... The, the, the government looking at making life uh, easier for, for, for such people. Uh, so it's, it's a critical question, which perhaps I can't provide answers to. Uh, uh, but again, I think what is important is for government to provide uh, enabling environment. And some of the enabling environment that we talk about is like the issue of power. You know, if, if there is constant power supply that perhaps Nigerians will definitely gladly pay for, this might create a lot of uh, uh, employment opportunities, self-employment, like the welder who doesn't have to buy a gigantic uh, generator, look for diesel here and there that is so expensive to power the generator in order to do his or her job. The barber on the street and so on and so forth. There are so many things that are dependent on, uh, on electricity. So, you know, this enabling environment that we keep talking about are some of these basic infrastructures that government need to put in place uh, to make sure that lives become easier for everyone. Because like I said earlier, not everyone works for the government. In fact, very minute, uh, very small percentage of the population works for government, you know? Uh, so we need the enabling and this enabling environment, the, uh, the, the, I mean, the, 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 the socioeconomic environment in Nigeria to be to, to, to be at least good so that uh, people can latch on to that and create employment for themselves and even other people in order to live a better life. Yeah, yeah. but you, you just okay. talked about power and you talked about an enabling environment. There's this headline also on the punch there saying federal government insists on uh, um, electricity subsidy uh, amid tariff review. Federal government insists on electricity subsidy amid tariff review. Okay, so your thoughts on that? Subsidy on electricity. Yes, uh, we, I know for, for a fact that uh, every part of the world, uh, government subsidize one thing or the other, whether it's uh, electricity, whether it's uh, uh, food, whether it's transportation. You know, there are countries in the world where public transport is uh, virtually free. I mean, in Luxembourg, wherever you're going, if you're using public transportation, it's free everywhere. So, you know, it, it's not something that is uh, that is, that should be, you know, out of hand or out of place. No, my question, my question is, Mohamed, my question is that if you want to subsidize yeah. something, shouldn't you think of what the Nigerian people will benefit more? Because you're talking about subsidy in electricity. 
There are some people yes. who do, there are some communities that do not even have uh, public power supply, right. but they still have mm -hmm. because I, I thought our fear was people hijacking the so-called subsidy and using it to uh, benefit. That's what happened in the petroleum sector. What guarantee do we have mm -hmm. that if electricity uh, is, being uh, so is being subsidized, there will be no hijack? And if there's going to be a hijack, why not we let them hijack at the place where we know that we're already gaining? Because if petrol or fuel generally is subsidized, mm -hmm. aviation fuel, mm -hmm. I can travel by air anytime mm -hmm. I like because it will be cheap enough. I can go by land if I have a car and all those kind of things. This is something that was critical to Nigeria's economy. Now you want, you're talking about electricity subsidy, which is good anyway on its own, but is that really the subsidy that we need at this time? Yes, you can take it. It's not out of place as well. Electricity is very germane. It's very important. Even though not 100% uh, of Nigerians enjoy public electricity like you mentioned, but I know at least more than 60 or 70% do. So if you have... If you have uh, uh, subsidies around that area it's also important because if you are impacting at least 70 percent of the population that's a good number that's a very good number in fact a very good number so el it's subsidizing el electricity is also very very important yes but how are they going to make sure that um, the money is being used the way it should be used the subsidy is transparent enough because that's the problem we had in the fuel subsidy, uh, fuel subsidy. Huh? Now that's, le that's, that's, that's left for the government to implement. You understand? They actually know the loopholes if they are being sincere. If the government wants to be they very better sincere tell me Nigeria, now. <laughs> you know, you know, they, they understand, they should understand and know the loopholes where to, you know, block all these uh, corrupt activities and so on and so forth. And that's why at the beginning, even I, I am not a proponent of removal, removal of subsidy from the petroleum sector because I am saying, you know, you, you don't say you have a headache and then you cut off the head. You just find medication, you know, in order to relieve you of the pain of the headache, rather than just outrightly cutting off the head. Uh, we've seen where the petroleum uh, removal, uh, I mean, subsidy has plunged Nigeria into our Nigerians. So it, it's, it's not a bad idea if the government decides to subsidize uh, uh, electric. Remember, again, that it's not just meant for household. We have uh, whether our, 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 you know, our economic sector I mean, the few manufacturing plants and here, so on and so forth, do not really use public uh, electricity whatsoever, but they at least use as well. So if you have subsidies in this area, perhaps it might also reduce the cost of production and, and the cost for Nigerians to buy some of these this goods. So I think it's not a bad idea if the government decides to subsidize electricity and then make life a bit more uh, better and easier for Nigerians. Mm. Yeah. I just well, think he's digging one hole to cover <laughs> another one. Just uh, <laughs> go ahead, please. Well, I mean, I, th I think for me personally, I just believe that there should be power supply. Mm. And if we're saying that we want foreign investors to come in, we need an economy that thrive. And if they're going to use power, it should be readily available for them. But let's move over to the Guardian. Right now, we are not even in the whole country. We are not having as much power as, like, like Abdullahi yes, said, the mosque. one mosque yeah. in, in Saudi Arabia. So right. what are we Anyways, let's about? move over to the Guardian. And um, the major headline here says, Deficits, Execution, Concerns, over expanded 28.8 trillion naira budget. Now, um, from what we know, the budget was about 27.5, um, and then it has been expanded right now. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, if we keep going to borrow, if we have to keep borrowing rather to fund all of these things and we're still expanding the budget, we're not seeing these politicians or the government actually cutting their spending, but then they're increasing the budget by at least 1.2, 1.3 trillion and, um, naira. Well, what are your thoughts on this one? The deficit, the execution concerns over the expanded 28.8 trillion naira budget. The National Assembly, uh, you know, over the years have actually mastered the art of uh, looking over itself. I mean, uh, the, if you if you, the, the increase the increment in, in 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 the in the budget just signed by the Mr. President, you see, is specifically on uh, you know the side of the National Assembly. They actually increase their own you know their own budgetary allocation, and is is what they've been doing over the years mm. for the past three or four five years. They do that every time. Every time the executive submits a budget on their own part of, the, I mean, 
their own part of their allocations, they always increase by trillions of naira, which is shocking. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, some of the some some of some of the frivolities, like I keep saying, that that the budget for is is for uh, what I call a play area within perhaps the National Assembly, where they are budgeting for a whooping four billion, a four four billion for I call that a play area, like uh, you know you know a relaxation area for the senators and the house of wow. first member at this time the nigerians are groaning uh, you know but again uh aside that again some of the challenges with our budget over the years is that yes the only thing i will give kudos to in the past four five years or so in nigeria is the fact that you know over the years before five years ago we are used to passing the budget perhaps in the middle of the year uh, sometimes May, sometimes June, or even July, when the year is fast spent, that is when we pass the budget. But this, kudos now for the past three, four, five years, we've resorted to say before January 1 or maximum January 1, we have passed the budget. That is actually the very, uh, I could, uh, that's actually the, the very best thing I would say about Nigeria's budget in the past four years. But in terms of implementation, it's still very, very appalling, seriously, because we are doing less than 60 to 70 percent of budget performance every year which is very poor seriously because i know as at december 31st i mean two days ago you know i follow tracker a private initiative i follow them every time and i see so many things mentioned on their their, their handles about things that are budgeted for perhaps some some, some of them have been paid for and then outrightly not done projects not done so many all over nigeria and you have it's like it's just scattered all over the country then who is pursuing these things i mean why is the icpc there why is the efcc there uh private entities have actually taken the initiative to do the, the harder job of digging up all these things but yet nigerian uh, taxpayers money have been allocated to some people and then projects are not done outrightly then some of the projects that are even, you know, uh, done, they are done shabbily. Uh, you allocate 200 million for uh, a simple building, and what you see is less than uh, maybe 20 or even 50 million that have been uh, implemented. So we need to go beyond this. I, I hope this 2024 budget will not be the same as what we've been having in, in I mean, in in uh, in our previous years. It's it's we need this budget to be fully implemented. And then we start talking about the impact on the lives of Nigerians. Because like I said earlier, we've been doing poorly in terms of implementation of the budget. People or organizations have just been paid. Keep, we keep paying people and then they don't carry out, you know, the functions. They don't carry out, they don't implement the project. And then they go scot-free, you know, with taxpayers' money. Uh, some, of the, um, some of the very funny things that we see, again, is that we have perhaps in Nigeria, Nigeria's budget at this age and time, we still budget for utensils at, uh, I mean, at, at the state house. We still budget for pots, plates, cups, and so on and so forth. So many frivolities. We pay restaurants to carry out uh, building constructions. It's, it's so appalling. So I hope this 2024 budget will be very different because we need every couple to be accounted for. Nigerians are going through so much hardship that we need every couple seriously to be accounted for so that at least uh the lives of nigerians will, will be better as, as as we keep praying well, let's pray all the time we like praying for me i i i think that is that going to be a time whereby they budget um there's a budget of maybe five trillion and then they come back and they say you know what we're trying to cut spendings and we we would just want you to give us trillionaire yeah i repent i'm not being devil advocate anymore it will <laughs> never happen <laughs> how will they come and say it's it's too much let's cut it yeah, why, I, why? I don't see that happening anytime soon okay if it will happen maybe but not now mm. but talking about people going scot-free um it is still fresh in our minds in the previous uh, previous administration where uh, some uh, security chiefs were said to be corrupt, and they had done a lot of things that uh, they needed to be sacked. But they were they retired, and they were given ambassadorial appointments. Yeah. We know that is very fresh in our memory. But now generals have been promoted, and Huriwa, a, a body, is uh, querying the promotion of generals amid insecurity. But would like to have your thoughts. 
The generals were just promoted. We are seeing killings in Plateau State, where the people even have their effrontery to write letters to communities and say, we are coming again yeah. after killing up to 200 people. And they actually went back and killed at least about four people uh, in communities that they wrote letters to. So what are your thoughts on the fact that uh, generals are being promoted even when there is no security in Nigeria? Uh, is 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 actually um, is happening? Uh, what has been happening across the country? It's not only in Plateau State. Perhaps the number in Plateau State. I mean, the Plateau State uh, incidents uh, came to four because it was a very large number. Yes, but it is across the country. Let's be very honest. Yes. Uh, right. Again, the thing is this. Yes, we can't fault the promotion. I mean, of generals because you remember, if you appoint a new service, or, I mean, new service chiefs. It means those people on the same rank with these service chiefs have to go. I mean, it's, it's a general mm. kind of uh, perhaps whether on written or written policies, I mean, in the military. So because you can't have people on the same rank or the same class. Now, let me use that word with the service chiefs, because, you know, in the military, you can't be saying you can't be saying sir to your mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so so these people have to go and then you have to promote others, you know, to fill in that gap. I think that's what happened, because if you remember before even the promotion of the generals, you have generals that were retired, you know, uh, and it is because of the elevation of uh, the new service chiefs. But having said that, I mean, in t the problem with us is that we actually know what is right or what we needed to do, but we are not doing it. You can't keep doing same thing and then expecting different results. Nigeria is just three years old, for God's sake, you know, and we are said to operate federalism. But that, this is just merely on paper. Now, why do I say so? You can't say a sitting governor, for instance, in Plateau State, you know, who is said to be the, 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 the chief security officer of his state, but does not have power over the police, does not have power over the military, and so on and so forth. Things are happening in Plateau State in remote areas, like, for instance, the Bokos, and so on and so forth. And then he has to call maybe Abuja, to react even if you think abuja is close is closer is close to uh what's it called to jaws and so on and so forth but it takes hours our kind of roads and our, our kind of uh, topography and so on and so forth. it takes hours for reaction and then we are always reacting we are never proactive we've had this crisis severally this is not the first time two three four five even ten years ago what have we done what have we implemented we've had white papers we've had community sittings and so on and so forth what we are running away from is the fact that we do not want community policing. We do not want state police. We do not. In fact, in, our, I, I, in my kind of advocacy, I talked about even local government policing. The, yes, because like I said, from just to Bokos, probably is another one hour or two or three hours where you have perhaps maybe bad road. You know, people are being killed. It took it about 200 people were killed in different areas of the same local government and so on and so forth. Imagine, it did, this didn't happen in just two minutes or ten minutes even. It must have taken at least one, two, three hours. What were the response from the military and the, and the police? Almost zero. You know, it is almost one week or even more than, sorry, yeah, more than one week of this happening. How many people have been arrested? You know, at two, uh, what's it called? 24 hours after this, we find that state governors were just trooping into um, Lagos to say hello to the president, and they were married. Yeah. Uh, they, they, you know, they were partying, like I, like, like I would say, for, for the Xmas period. Why 200 people, 200 lives are already, were already lost in play too? Come on, come on. So we must rethink, and I think the way forward is state policing and even local government policing. We can't run away from that. This idea of... Uh, making calls to Abuja anytime there is crisis here and there, we, we should understand that we need a restructuring. And that restructuring means we need local government policy. Because these people who understand and know the area better than people who are bringing from Abuja or elsewhere to come and police, perhaps Sokoto or even or, or Plateau. So we need to rethink about this. And I think it's one of the cardinal things that the president promised, restructuring. So perhaps before he leaves office, these are some of the things uh, he, we need to sit down on the round table as Nigerians to discuss and then implement. 
All right, let's look at Daily Trust. And um, a small headline here says, Dangote Refinery receives fourth crude shipment. Um, on another paper here on the punch, it says Dangote Refinery gets fresh one million crude barrels. Um, so we know Dangote Refinery is about to start producing. I mean, the president even spoke about it in his speech. Even though I want to believe Dangote is a private um, refinery, yeah. it's not part of the government. So I'm wondering why that is in the president's speech, except uh, maybe Dangote is another arm of the government. We don't know. <laughs> but yes, Dangote is about to start um, producing and they just received a fresh um, crude oil of one million barrel. What is your thoughts on this and the impacts we're going to have even on our fuel prices? Uh, it's a good one that at least uh, perhaps the uh, we, we keep having shifts of uh, production dates. Maybe at least finally, maybe I, I'm sure sometimes this 2024 will have uh, Dangote refinery producing. I mean, refining uh, PMS and other uh, petroleum uh, products for Nigerians to use. But in terms of uh, pricing, uh, I am not optimistic that uh, it will change anything. Remember, uh, Dangote, perhaps, the crude oil is not buying in Naira. So uh, I doubt it if you will be selling uh, to government. I mean, the NMPC who are in charge now to now dispose to Nigeria. I doubt it if you will be selling in Naira. I really doubt it. So what we might just be saving, perhaps, might be the foreign exchange, you know. Uh, and then when we are saving that, it means we are able to uh you know to use that savings of foreign exchange for other critical sectors like the aviation sector remember we still have more than 700 th uh, million plus old uh, international airlines and so on and so forth you know people that their 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 funds have been trapped in nigeria for about two years because we actually we're actually broke because we don't have enough foreign exchange to to, to go into that sector so perhaps if we are saving from dangote refinery producing we might be able to you know, look at other sectors that are also critical, like aviation and so on and so forth that I mentioned, and even agriculture. But that might be the basic and the only advantage. But in terms of pricing, crashing, I really doubt it. Because remember, Dangote also is not just uh, uh, coming into business. I mean, the petroleum sector is not its first business. It's been pro producing cement for only yes. God knows when in Nigeria. And then <laughs> the price keeps uh, skyrocketing. Uh, you know, he is producing everything in Nigeria. I mean, the raw materials is there, the whatsoever is there, the plant is there, but we don't have it uh, cheap, you know. Uh, so I don't think uh, there will be any great impact in terms of pricing. Uh, the only impact I'm seeing is that perhaps it might save Nigeria some foreign exchange uh, uh, money for us to use in other critical sectors. That uh, might be the biggest how advantage. How is it even saving Nigeria some money? Because <laughs> if it's buying in dollars and selling in dollars, is it it's not the same the thing? It's just maybe the shipping, the money for shipping it from overseas down yes. here that will yeah. change. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. That's a big That's difference. The because, one. you know, if, 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 you follow, if you follow the trajectory of that, uh, uh, the money for shipping, the landing costs, and so on and so forth, actually makes some huge difference in our foreign exchange uh, uh, coffers. Okay. Yeah. It's all right. Uh, this is where we'll drop it this morning. It's been a pleasure having you, Mohammed, on the show. <clears throat> Thank you so much for being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Happy New Year. I hope you traveled and you are part of the people that <laughs> I, enjoyed I the 50%. We, I wish we took, we took this headline, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll be talking with uh, Mohammed Abdullahi, a public relations analyst, and we'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll take a hot topic. Stay with us.